All right, we, this is uh, President's Day, the 20th of February. It's probably between 45 and 50 degrees out right now, a real mild day. And I'm checking uh, the trees and uh, see if there's any sap running. So I've got my bucket here I empty it into. Take the cover off. And if you'll note this cover is a very useful tool, especially if it rains or snows or in this case, if you look on this side of the cover, it prevented this bird poop from going into the sap. So it has many, many uses. Oh, nice. So we got a we got roughly a half a bucket of sap and it's really dripping. I will uh, I will collect this again. I'll check it later in the day. It's around noon time right now and it's really dripping really well. We got two taps on this big ooh, rock maple. Now look at look at the amount of sap in this one. Well, I would say between those those two taps, we probably got about, uh, that's a five gallon bucket, we probably got about three gallons this morning. And I had checked these yesterday and emptied them late in the day, so that sap has run overnight in and today. We had a mild night last night. I think it was probably, when I got up this morning, it was like 30, six degrees so stayed mild all night so we got two more trees here on the lawn to check so this one we got about the same amount that pretty much filled that five gallon pail of course I only brought one pail with me which is a big mistake but uh, so I got one more tree to empty so I will I will uh, pick it up later Well, this one is even fuller than uh, the other one. Dripping away? Yeah. How old a tree would you say this is, Donnie? I can remember my mother planting this. So I would say this tree is probably 60 years old, maybe 50 to 60 years old. Yeah. The tree that we just had the two taps on, I would say, is well over 100 years old. How about your mom? She's 104. <laughs> and her birthday's in and, and, when, <laughs> and when she came to this place, she was 24 when they bought this place. Wow. So, <clears throat> yeah. All right. Well, today we're headed over to Wayne Jones's. Uh, we had a pretty good sap run yesterday, and, the, and uh, last week it ran pretty good. Not not 100%, but it ran ran. And uh, so we're headed in his road now. He boils the sap down for me, <clears throat> which is great because I don't have an evaporator and takes half of what we produce and I get the other half which to me that's one heck of a good deal because it's pretty time consuming to boil down sap and uh, and takes a, a lot of time to sit there and especially when you get down near the end it, uh, it you have to watch it pretty closely so we're on the dirt road that leads him into his place and 
and uh, he said he was boiling today so we'll talk with him and and get his take on on the sap business and and uh, go from there I dropped these buckets full yesterday oh, you're getting, you're getting <laughs> oh my god I get you out of the house yeah, yeah, Wayne says you're doing real good. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go in and check and see what the heck is going on inside. Boil away. Yeah, he built this shack. New, I think it was last year. He had a smaller one, and he enlarged it. And this is a great, great building. Did you sell it, friends, down here at the Jefferson Market? And we got to clean it up with Joe's here. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, how, much, how much you got it? How much you got to boil today? I've got another hundred gallons out there to boil up. Yeah. I hit 330 last night, and I rolled it down to about 130. Yeah. And um, so. You want to introduce him to the world, buddy? Oh, <laughs> your, this your, guy. Your uh, your sap maker. This is Wayne. Wayne <laughs> <Wayne's laughs> Carroll. Syrup maker. Yeah, Syrup maker. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Life is too short. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the finishing part. And we're trying to get it down to 59 bricks on this hygrometer here. But we cheat and use one that's called the Murphy cup. So this will adjust to the temperature. So then this, this needs to float at whatever the dial says to be syrup. Takes a lot of guesswork out of it. So this is the science of it. That science. It's a big science project, people. What's the mirror for? See that you. mirror is so when you sit down in that chair, Joe. And look at the mirror. Yeah. You can see it into the pot. Nice. So you don't have to stand up all the time. <laughs> Especially with a guy that's had vertigo, getting up and down can trigger vertigo. And <laughs> we might be laying on the floor right. in a ball. <laughs> it's not a very pleasant thing to have. That's pretty sweet, huh? Yes. My, my son and his family had it made for us. Like in the new shop? The new sugar house is fantastic. Nice and roomy. You left room for a bigger evaporator. Left room for a bigger evaporator. Yeah. When I get a new wife, I'll get a new evaporator. <laughs> <laughs> the one that says yes to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple important things to have in the sugar house, and one of them is a wife that goes along with it. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's a big part of it. I'm at the sugar Yeah. All right, so we collect, we collect the sap in the afternoon, and we need to take a walk over to my shop, and I'll show you the reverse osmosis over there, and then we'll come back over here. Perfect. If I can leave the wife in charge. I think she's selling. Yeah. She's doing the important work. PI? Yeah, <laughs> the selling. Turn that down, because that will boil over. Watch that pot, will you please? <laughs> this is a reverse osmosis, and what this does, it will take water out of the sap. So I bring my sap into the shop in the afternoon and hook up and let this run overnight and it will reduce by 50, 60%. So in other words, it takes out, 
at least half the water. Most of the time I come in at 2%, which is 43 gallons of sap to make a gallon of syrup. And I bring it down to around 5%, which is 17 and a quarter gallons. So this takes a lot of the boiling time out of the equation. This runs all night. It has a low, a low pressure shut off, so it will shut right down when it's out of sap, which is a good thing so I can get a good night's sleep because I'm not one to go and boil, uh, watch it all night because I'll be asleep and it will burn up. But this is worth every penny you spend on it to reduce the amount of firewood you're going to throw into that evaporator. Yeah. And I've heard tell they, they uh, use the water that you take out of the sap and they the, bottle it? Now? Yes, the big guys are bottling the water, which they're calling, some are calling it tree water or maple water, and it's pure. I guess you can't really get much purer than that as far as drinking water. Yeah. It does have a shelf life. That's the downside of it um, because it's probably still got a little bit of sugar in it according to the hydrometer here for the sugar content that is the water that came out of the arrow last night and it's right at zero so let's no, tell them that there's no sugar in it to speak of but typically it runs coming out of the tree around two percent Donnie has a couple of trees at his mother's house that will produce three percent which is only 28 gallons and a half to make a gallon of syrup. So 1% one is, is a big bit. number. Yeah. Yeah, because if you even, we go from 2% at 43 gallons to one and a half or up to 57 gallons. So that's, that's your red maple. Yeah, and some so, longer in the season, the, oh, okay. the sugar content will come down. The big guys, they don't care. They'll arrow it at 1% because they've got, you know, great big ones. They do thousands of gallons an hour. Do you ever get down to like five, six, seven, or Not eight? out of the tree. No. No. No, only through the IRO. Yeah. And if I ran it back through the IRO, I could take it down to 8% if I wanted to. Wow. But then um, I like boiling it so that it gets it some good flavor. Um, and obviously the less liquid in it, the less boiling time we have. How are you, how are your trees doing that you collect? From. Good, good. They're, they run about 2% everything I collect. Yeah, yeah. Um, Even those trees over along uh, the uh, lane there? Yeah, yeah, they run about 2%. Huh. Yeah. It's, it's funny, my mother's trees are so high. J yeah, you know, it's just... Just the nature just of things. Just the nature of things. Yeah. One of these have this membrane filter in it. Whoops, sorry. And this is how thick the filter is. Holy cow. And the sugar that's suspended in the sap will not go through this filter. Um, these were designed for drink for your household drinking water to take contaminants out. But in the sugar business, we save the contaminants, which is the sugar. So there's one of these in each one of those housings, and I think it's 75 gallons an hour goes through each filter. So they, they're in series. So it keeps passing through each one. How often do you have to change the uh, Well, I change these every year yeah. because they do um, say there's, I think it um, somewhere is around 3,000 gallons per filter. And it's, to me, I use them up pretty hard and I just replace them every year. Then yeah. there's no worries about them failing mid-season. Right. Um, you can wash them, they have a, a product you can run through if you're not going to use it for some time or if you just want to purge them and I usually do it what I what I think is mid-season I'll run up they call it arrow soap through it and uh, clean them out they'll run a little better after that the main thing is you don't wash any of this equipment with a soap actual soap like a dish soap because finished syrup will take on that flavor just like that. Um, so everything from here out is washed with just hot water. Um, and so far we haven't had any contaminated syrup. This is the arrow sat from last night. Okay. So we had over 300 gallons. There was, a, I don't know, about 135, I think in this tank this morning. 
and that flows into the sap house. So how's it, how's it been running? Or? Good, good. So the sap comes in here into my preheater and this will warm up the cold sap so, okay. to help on the boiling. So it preheats? Yeah, preheats pre off, off, off the heat of the stack. That's brilliant. Which, which this is just a piece of stainless, so it, it's super hot. Yeah, yeah. What we do is we skim off the foam so it doesn't burn because it will burn onto the side of the pan. Do anything with the foam? Yeah. Nope. No. I, I guess you could put it in cloth if you want to go. That's pretty good. The foam is a little better. That seems kind of nasty to me, but it's foam in this one. Wow, look at that. You did put it in your coffee one day. Right. Yeah, it's slow. Yeah. And you like the burn pine or anything you got? Anything I got. These are slabs from when I sawed out the beams to build the sugar house. Oh, nice. So the process here is a hot fire and keep boiling. <laughs> How long does it take to boil? Uh, I probably boil 15, 16 gallons an hour off. So. If it's 5% sap we're bringing in, it's about, you know, about a, a gallon's worth of syrup we can make about every hour once we get going here. So you're boiling it down into this. I boil it, and this this is supposed to be the finished pan, but we have trouble getting it real close, near finished, so we end up putting it over here on the small stove where we can control and boil it down to the finished syrup. Hopefully this one will be ready here shortly. This this will boil over when you turn around to look at something. When you come back it will be boiling over. And the closer it gets to syrup, the easier it is to boil. Okay. I'm sure there's a science on yep. temperatures. Yes, what we're doing is we're boiling out all the water that's in the sap to make syrup. Water boils at 212 most days. Sir, finished syrup is up around 219 to 220, depending on your elevation and the barometric pressure of the day. And the closer the syrup it gets, the smaller the bubbles are. Hmm. And you, and you keep track of your gallons? And you got yeah. some old taps over there? Yes, it's just old taps that I found. This is how much money you got into this place? Yes, yes that's how much money you have in maple syrup here. <laughs> no, that number is what they say. That number is the number of drops of sap out of a tree to make one gallon of sap. Holy cow. Okay, so we. I figure some Government guy sat there with a counter. Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> cool. Cool to see the different tabs. Yes, and that is an old sap bucket. Oh, wow. Back in the day, what they used. Oh, cow. You guys ought to make some of those. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're called aluminum now, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> One day behind it. <laughs> Those are a little bit more efficient, I bet. Yes. These are your filters over here? Yes. Now, is that, is, are these finishing filters or are they? 
before well, like pretty well one of them the, the funny shaped ones in the middle those are uh, I use off the evaporator, they call them cone, cone filters, and then they have a thin paper filter that goes inside of them. They call a pre-filter. Oh wow, yeah. This will collect the big stuff, mm -hmm. and they're easier to wash because these are a heavy, they call them oil on filters, they're like a felt. Yeah. They're a pain to wash, um, and you have to wash them out every time because they'll, they'll literally plug right up with um, contaminants out of the syrup that you're boiling. And then these square ones we use after it's syrup, you have to filter it one last time before you bottle it. Um, because when you bring it up over 190, 195 degrees, it creates sugar sands, they call it. and. If you don't filter them out, they will settle to the bottom of your jug yeah. or, and uh, be like a piece of rock candy. Um, so the final filtering is the most important of anything you do in the sugar house. And hopefully we can uh, get this pot finished and we'll run it through my vacuum filter over here, which is a homemade one. So this is a vacuum filter oh wow so we took a pot cut the bottom out and we put these two filters in and we put a fitting in and we put the shot back hooked up to that when we fill this up with finished syrup and it will suck it through the filter in an instant that's brilliant if not it goes through like molasses in January pretty slow <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant and just hook it up to your Milwaukee yeah huh. they they make them commercial versions of this but they're you know eight hundred dollars an hour yeah and this is I probably have 40 bucks in that that's plus the vacuum and everybody has to have a vacuum yeah yeah you already got that yeah. and and with this little damper on the air fitting for the vacuum that will I did that to help keep the sap finished syrup from getting sucked into the vacuum. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it seems to work. And then what temperature do you bottle it at? 180 degrees. Wow. And that's done over back here. This is another one of our homemade rigs. This is a water boiler. And this has a dial thermostat so we can if, if it's will keep temperature at 180 degrees and this rig here is a foot operated oh nice pad. so it runs you hit that pedal and it will run right out and as soon as you pick your foot up it shuts that's off that's nice Hup, there it is good catch he's sorry <laughs> <laughs> bubbles are getting smaller that's, so <laughs> that's a work yeah. That's what happens that's when you're talking too much. I told you years ago when I was a kid, my mother did a cap and yeah. was on the wall. Or and then you got a meter over yes. here that's showing you how much on the wall, how much. Oh, that, yes. Is that showing how much sap's in the. Yeah. This tube. It all, it, one thing it does is it vents the preheater. Okay. And it tells me this bottom line is when we're at it, when we're out. Yeah. Um, so this morning I got going and it filled up and, and the little floaty was floating and then all of a sudden the liquid dropped out and there must have been some ice in the preheater or something that caused the jam and I was starting to panic because the fire is hot and we're making we got we got a problem so when what i can do is like this is a, a flow keeps the evaporator at constant level mm -hmm. and if i touch this that you watch that little blue thing yeah oh whoa okay so that tells me when everything is working because my carol asked me the other day why you got that i said so i can tell if it's flowing right and this morning 
that told me we had a blockage. And, and a blockage would be something that would ruin their evaporator? Yeah, well, no, it was in the preheater. They must be, must be holding some liquid and freezing on me. No, would that ruin your evaporator? Well, your... eventually it would if you ran the pan dry. Yeah. So you always should have a bucket of water yeah. sitting on the floor yeah. that you can throw in in a hurry. Um, but yeah, that's a, 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 a good safety device. Wow. That's quite a uh, quite a rigging you got for your, your heat shield. Yeah, I like that. Like that. Who made that? Oh, that actually was in the house when we bought it around some beans. I had a Come wood on. stove. Really? And I saved them because someday I was going to need them. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, did he tell you how many drips it took? To yeah. Make a and Carol counted those. Yeah, every single one. Yeah. <laughs> he was my first trip. Right <laughs> and Donnie, you're, you're glad to hand this part over to the job? Oh, yes. Hey, can you imagine? Hey, see you, Daryl. Yeah, yeah, anytime. Yeah, yeah. Take care. Good seeing you. See you, Daryl. So you don't mind handing this part over, Donnie? No, I, I think he's got the, the worst end of the deal. <laughs> you know, collecting sap yeah, and bringing uh, it over is pretty easy compared Because he goes on vacation while he's... Yeah, you know, a couple trip. times. Oh, he doesn't even collect anymore. No, 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 he goes fishing with me. No, he goes away. And yeah, you're, you're, other people you're collect drag me away from it. Uh -huh. you're, you're like your mother. You don't have time to sit around and watch this process, right, do you? No. 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 <laughs> Now, this is, to me, the hardest part of the whole deal. There's a lot of science in this, isn't there? Yes, a lot of math, a lot of science. Yeah. It's a great project for kids in school to do. Yeah. As oh, yeah. Donnie's daughter does in some schools here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she does it in a couple different schools right now. She teaches in a district of five different schools, and she, uh, does the sapping on two of the schools because they got some maple trees on the property and and the neighbors allow them to tap their trees and so they do it and it gets the kids out and they learn something you know and uh, really have a great time and and uh, every so often they get enough sap ready and they the janitor made a homemade evaporator and they bring the kids out and they evaporate it make some syrup and uh, Darcy gets some ice cream and they have a uh, syrup and ice cream. I bet they hate that. Oh they hate that yeah yeah so so and Wayne was good enough to donate some buckets and lids and taps and and uh, for that project and which is wonderful she appreciates that Wayne. No she's more welcome. Yeah. Most kids will learn way more doing that yeah, then they will. All week in school. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They they really like it. Hopefully, so. they don't get addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an right. expensive hobby. <laughs> yeah. Joe asked if that number was how much I had in the, yeah, in probably, my business. Probably. <laughs> I'm pretty close. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah probably put, never ends. Put a dollar sign up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's pretty cold here though, it's only 70. Yeah, it's only 70 in here today. Usually it's about 90. It seems like it's going out better today than it has in some I'll other time. The air temperature outside is better. Yeah. Is that what it is? And uh, I'm Keep figuring out how to get it. I guess to try to get the building as hot as I can before I start because this, somebody built the building too tight and the steam doesn't like to go out. If we close this door, this is why this door is open to let in air so that the steam will go out. But if I close this door, you give it a minute, and that steam will start building. It doesn't take long, does it? Yeah, it rolls the town. Yeah, see, it's already starting to build. Yeah, I've been in here when he's first started it up. You can't see that. I, he would be sitting in the chair, and I'd be a little far from him, and I couldn't see it. <laughs> and that's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> in this shack? In yeah, this one, yeah, I remember the old brand one. New. Word. Brand new, brand new, and uh, somebody—we won't mention our name—thought <laughs> we'd really 
Well, something that we've already got to be able to use. <laughs> His dog house. Yep. Uh, so, if I kick him out, he's got a nice place to go. And I can feel the temperature going out. Oh, wicked. Oh, yeah, I can, I can feel it. So, we open this back up, let in some fresh air. What, what kind of temperature do you think you're running in there? Hot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's got to yeah. be up near 1,000. Oh, yeah. It will probably, yeah. Over, yeah. Yeah. Because there's, there's actually a blower underneath. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw that little We'll, we'll shut the blower off. Oh, wow. Listen to the boil. So this is what you'd have if you, well, we could open the damper in the front of the stove. Uh, Well, for any difference, the dish comes up a little bit. But that's nothing. So that, by having the bore, it increases or decreases the time of evaporation. Well, it, it, it makes a hot, lot hotter fire. Yeah, because so it evaporates. Back, right. Yes. Okay, we're going to turn it back on. Oh, yeah. Watch the boil. All right, now I'm going to put some more wood in. Sawmill, you've got some firewood there. All right, well, I was telling Joe, these are the slabs that came off the beans when I sawed the beans out for the sugar. Oh, okay. So we're getting all, we're getting a whole tree. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now she's coming to life, Joe. Yeah. Oh, Phil. That, that will sometimes almost jump, it will jump out. You can see it on the top of the pan there. Yeah. And you don't want to stick your arm in there. Right. No, as long as you have fluid coming, you can't be too hot on that, right? No. Right. No, well, you know, this is obviously here, look at, this has got a good boil going in now. So it's it. Mm. 212 is boiling water, is what we're boiling right now. So yeah. when, watch oh, that, that back pan really. That's okay. So that how, how far down. down do you get this pan? Well, before you drain it. I would like to get it closer, but I. I can't seem to get it there. It would be nice if it was within a degree or two of 220, but uh, I'm going to say it's probably 214, maybe. Uh, I'm going to take that little bucket. Yeah, all right. Yep. We'll give this a test here. Yeah, this operation is from tree to table. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you would have thought a guy that owns an ice cream shop, Donnie, could have brought up some ice cream for us. Yeah, right. I yeah. got some, but it wouldn't last yeah. too long. Hey, maybe that, that's an idea. Sell him some. And he can, uh, when he comes I, out I, Sundays, he can take some of this maple syrup. You know how much right a over. Sunday would cost? <laughs> I know, I'm not booth bag. Yeah. No, it's nowhere near ready already. Yet. What did it test out at? It didn't even float it. Uh, but that's... There we go. 40... What's that? 45... Bricks. Now what about color on syrup? How it like grading and stuff? The, How's that? The grading... Uh, Obviously, the earlier the season, typically is lighter syrup. Obviously, the longer you boil it, the darker it gets. And if you if you keep it um, as sap in a bucket, the longer you keep it, the quicker, the more the uh, bacteria will start eating the sugars that's in it, and it causes it to be darker. But we have this little electronic rig here that we use for grading um, and they give you a narrow liquid that you calibrate the uh, grader with. Is there a grade that people want? Well, if you're to me, in, I like it all. If yeah. you're in Vermont, everybody likes delicate, delicate they call it. So this is ready for a sample of syrup. We don't have any here. And we fill these little jars up with a sample, put them in here and it will give us a number 
and then on the back of this it tells you what color it is by what number that it comes up as. Um, we, we make a lot of dark. Um, further into the season it will go to very dark and most people that have never tried the dark love the dark once they try it because it yeah, has flavor. I think it's got more flavor. The delicate yeah. one, uh, golden, golden delicious, uh, th that has very little flavor. Hmm. You know, so, you know, it's to everybody's taste. Yeah. And so is there a price difference on the back not, of the end Not of it? my house, there is no price difference, right. but in Vermont, the delicate or it sells for more money yeah. over there. Yeah. We make cinnamon too. Right, we also cinnamon add sticks. cinnamon sticks to our syrup. Yeah. Right in the, we put them in the jars and that will flavor it. Put and syrup right in. It is just like having fresh cinnamon on your pancakes. Wow. Um, well, I usually take one of these, you know, I got a, I got a quart in my refrigerator and every well, but I'd say about every day, yeah. I'll go in and unscrew the top and no. just take a guzzle. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I, that's I, how, I, that's how I eat, too. Just like having some, a handful of M&M's, isn't right. it? Right, yeah. Just, oh, man. It's really tasty. It, it, it's sugar on, in its purest form. Now you guys must sell some if you're producing that kind of amount per oh, gallon. Yeah. You want to, do you, uh, you guys sell it, would you sell it online or is it just? We sell it down at the market. Yeah. They buy some. Sell so it to a couple of five stands. So if, so if somebody wanted your syrup or Donnie's syrup, where would they get it? At the market or here. Jefferson market. market. No, yeah. We're licensed to sell it anywhere, but. Yeah. Just the farm stand down in Damascot, our Clark's farm stand, and they sell around 150 gallons wow. of syrup every year. Yeah. Because Jigga says, Every person in August comes through the door buys pint, at least a pint of maple syrup to take yeah. back with them. We yeah. sold them some, but, but we can't provide no. enough for what he sells. So. No. no. Uh, so we, we keep it local. That is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even feel it anymore. <laughs> Do you guys smell how nice it is in here? Do you get used to it? That's I am. Thing. I can't. I am. It smells nice. No, smell no flavor at all to me. It smells so nice in here. Really? Yeah. No. Yeah. No you can probably sell this wood. And oh. Just take that beam and resell it as a smell <laughs> fragrance. Come on. There's a lot of sugar makers, so price is probably a little less there because there's yeah. less competition. Um, we don't sell anything. What they call anything over a gallon in a container is considered bulk syrup and it's sold by the pound. Okay? Like honey. Yeah. And it's, I believe it's about 11 pounds to the gallon. And depending on the grade of the syrup you're selling, um, I, it's around $2.40 a pound for bulk. Because the big guys, you know, it's 55 gallon drums. Yeah. I was in a sugar house over the other side of Rangeley a few years back. In the guy's first year, it made 13,000 gallons of syrup. Wow. His first year. He said the biggest trouble was getting enough 55 gallon drums and enough deep foamer to keep the foam down and the evaporate. Uh, because yeah. he had he was running about 30,000 taps and uh, he said on a good day it was coming in at about 3,000 gallons an hour <laughs> into the sugar house. So he just, his reverse osmosis is constantly running to shrink liquid in the tank. 50 gallons a minute. Yeah. That's amazing. Almost and, a gallon a second. Yeah. yeah. You go on computer and there's Sugar houses in Canada that are pumping the sack three miles from the woods to the sugar house. Yeah. Takes quite a crew in the woods just to keep those lines. They're checking those lines for animals. Now, now, 
on the sap lines with the vacuum on them, there's now um, electronic readers that will send a signal for how the vacuum's doing and if they've lost vacuum. So then they can send somebody out, they know where they are in the woods and they can send somebody out on that line. Yeah. Either tree can come down or nutrient through it. Or who knows what it is. Right. There's one in northern Vermont now that's running somewhere around a quarter of a million taps. That's unreal. Uh, and I they, mean, it's a year-round operation. Oh yes, they're 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 you know making half a quarter of a million gallons yeah. of syrup. It's just a it, it's amazing. Well, what what's out there for businesses that uh, sap related? Yeah. You know, how many taps are you guys running? Oh, we must have 200 and 300 out. I don't know. It used to be four, more and more. Yeah. We didn't do it across the street. Most of, our, most of ours are red maples, which are, don't produce as much. Um, the ones out here behind the sugar house, I have a sap line that runs down through the woods and then comes over the roadside to a milk tank, and it has a uh, little IV water pump in it that will create a vacuum and help pull the liquid out of the line um, and that's got I think a hundred and sixty something taps on that line. Um, and then we got 70 buckets out here, yeah. 70 line uh, taps out here. Yeah we got 70 buckets out the grandkids love to come and help put out buckets and collect so um, and I got uh, another couple places with natural vacuum which is 3 16th line run on a slope and that will run on its own um, and we've got two up two areas for that and you just back up and pump the tank out and you're all done somehow we've got the 70 buckets out and the grandkids go skiing every week you know? <laughs> <laughs> like so like a guy i know that taps trees and he goes on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Are you boiled for any other Donnies? No. <laughs> yeah. He's the one of a kind. There's only one Donnie in the world. <laughs> uh, He's what they call a gentleman syruper. Yeah. I, yeah. He'll put the taps I'm, in. I'm certainly a, yeah. a, a low man on a totem pole when it comes to, you know, I think I got 65 buckets out. And, uh, you know, I just enjoy it. Nothing to do. Keep me uh, active. Get you out of bed in the morning. Right. Yeah. Oh, are they? What's D foam or is it like an oil? This is. It's uh, organic sap oil. Oh. The latest kind of oil you can get is organic. So all you need is a little drop of oil that will keep the foam down. Now we put butter in. Way back in. Yeah. Way back in the day, they used butter. The old timers would have a wire hanging over the evaporator and they'd hang a piece of salt pork on it. And the heat from the uh, evaporator would cause it to drip oils out of the salt pork to uh, keep the foam down. Other people will um, use milk. You can if you're not going to sell it. But, you know, um, the. Uh, you know, adding something to the syrup, you're really asking for trouble, especially a dairy product. Yeah. Um, if somebody's allergic to dairy, they might not like that. Prentice, yeah. Uh, we used to throw hot dogs in, too. Yes. In the, I, I was going to tell you to bring some of them Lewiston lobsters yeah, out. You, you, don't don't them them. Them. <laughs> you don't want them in there. You don't want them in there. So this is an old-fashioned yolk that the old timers used when everything was on buckets. And they put it on their shoulder, and then they could carry a five-gallon bucket on each side without using their arms. That's brilliant. Well, they probably had wooden buckets. Just like that one. Well, bigger than that to carry to the collection tank um, with a loop handle. But um, so you, can you imagine doing this all day on snowshoes, five, six hundred buckets? Jeez. <laughs> Yeah. They were rugged. They, yeah, oh yeah. They went to bed early. <laughs> there was no watching movies. How did the first, how did the Native Americans figure out to get to boil down maple sap right. and get syrup? Who were the first ones? 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, it have been uh, and, and it's the Indians. Has a, right. Still, but they they claim the Indians okay. used to yeah. heat rocks, and they'd have hollowed out wooden bowls, and they would put the hot rocks into the liquid to boil it. And they also used the Mother Nature's reverse osmosis was throw out the ice oh. that's in the bucket because there's less sugar in the ice. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the big debate for anybody with buckets. Do you throw out the ice or not? Uh, depends on how much sap you got. <laughs> if you don't want to stay up all night boiling, you throw the ice out. <laughs> but, yeah, so they, the Na Native Americans started by heating rocks, putting it into the wooden bowls to boil it off. Do you ever mess around with birch or no? No, because the problem is with birch, birch starts when maple is over. Maple runs when the temperature's down around 20, 20, 25 at night and gets up to 38, 40 degrees, maple runs. Birch runs when the temperature stays above freezing. Maple syrup is, is 43 to one, birch is close to 100 to one. So birch, you gotta boil a lot longer. It doesn't taste as good either. No. I, I, I call it the moxie yeah. of maple syrup. Right, yeah, it's all together different right. flavor. Yeah. It's like a molasses oh, kind of. I, yes. Yeah, I didn't care for it. Uh, yeah. The uh, problem, what happens is I wash this yesterday. Biggest mistake, you wash it, you're gonna boil over. Yeah. <laughs> you leave it dirty, and it won't boil over. Yeah. It's just like chopping in a chainsaw. Right. You're gonna hit a rock. <laughs> <laughs> How's this year shaping up? Good, good. We yeah. made 15 gallons in February, which um, unusual. Unusual. You know, we usually we get a run rick the end of February. This was around the 17th to the 24th. Uh, we had a good run and we made 15 gallons. It's always nice to get started. Yeah. It's even nicer to finish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the cleanup is the... Uh, yes. I will spend probably four days washing, collecting, washing, drying, putting away uh, all the stuff. Got to wash everything that the sap's been on. Yeah. The buckets, the tanks, the sap lines. Yeah. very informative yeah that he knows a lot about that boiling down stuff well that was great